Hey everybody, coming on June 1st, 2019, select GameStops are going to be doing a Bakugan event. I'm going to be at the one in Westchester, Pennsylvania, just a bit west of Philadelphia. Come by, hang out, bring your trades, it'll be awesome. Anyway, on with the show. Hey everybody, this is Kodak here, and while the excitement peaks at Momocon today, I was able to find the rest of the Wave 4 that I was missing. That was two of the Bakugan Ultra. In this case, we are taking a look at Ventus Webum. Now it just says Webum on here, which means that Ventus is considered its default attribute. And Webum is one of the Bakugan that we have really been looking forward to, or at least I've personally been really looking forward to, because it just has such a nice, complex, and intricate design. It does depend heavily on how well it is able to enter its marble form, but um, looks like it's going to be pretty good. Um, amazingly, despite all these legs, it still claims it's a complexity one. Uh, we have a nice picture of it over here. It's got its mouth open with the fangs there and all the eyes. That's pretty cool. Um, cores are Magic Shield and Regular Fist. It still says Battle Brawlers, despite the fact that the Wave 4 Bakugan cards are actually labeled as Bakugan Resurgence, which means this Battle Brawlers over here is a bit of a misnomer now, isn't it? Anyway, quick look on the back. We have another look at uh, Webum. Looks like the, the head also kind of pops up here. I guess that's supposed to be the, the mouth there compared to... Uh, how it's positioned inside the box. The head doesn't look like it springs up here. Maybe that's an additional point of transformation that I have to do. Um, taking a look in here, it looks like there's a couple differences between the uh, base model and the final one. It looks like the leg, the big leg components here are also um, light green on the prototype, whereas they're dark green elsewhere. But of course we have the Bakugan, two Baku cores, one ability card and one character card. We also have on the back here, Pegatrix, which I believe is going to be the main event for this wave. We have uh, Aquos Tertonium, so I actually could have waited a bit to get that guy, although um, the darkest Tertonium is the good one. We have uh, Oralis Krikelios, which has an interesting array of effects on its evolution, and finally the official release of Darkest Garganoid. Anyway, let's get this thing open. Yes! Yes! Oh, this is a good set here. I am liking basically everything I am seeing right now. Here we have the Webum Ultra card, Magic Shield and Regular Fist, 404, so at eight points, decently at par, and with a built-in reroll effect. So again, this is another uh, uh, bat, uh, another uh, resurgence set. As you can see, there's this little spiral here on the card. I didn't mention that on Tertonium and Cindius, and I'm sorry about that, but yeah, Wave 4, starting with Wave 4, the character cards are Bakugan resurgence cards. Um, but this is a very impressive card here, to, to have a, a 404 with a reroll ability. That's already really good. And then we have the card Web Snare. This is Ventus's free block, and it stops a Bakugan holding Fire Fist, which uh, a lot of aggro decks have been using Fire Fist. This might be good. I'd probably pick one of the one-cost ones that has better options. Um, I believe it's possible to make a fully Fire Fist deck, although I don't think any uh, Ventus Bakugan are involved in that, although that's in... Uh, in the coming waves there, but the reason I like this card being in here is because it showcases the character. Like, uh, I actually talked about this on my discussion of a Weecross starter deck, how it shows off two cards. Here's the character, here's something awesome the character can do. That, it, it's so much of the flavor and the presentation that this adds to, um, to the set. It just feels really good to get not just the character, but a card featuring them as well. Um, the cores are fairly typical. We have the uh, Magic Shield minus 400. You can get as high as minus 500, which I'd prefer for a trap core, which is, uh, it's fitting to have a trap core, seeing as it is a uh, spider. And we have the uh, Fist core, which is plus 100B, Aquos or Ventus plus three damage. I don't think I actually have any of these yet. Um, although Ventus hasn't really been seeing uh, much play outside of its debuff effects. It's mostly been uh, been used for some ramp. A lot of people have been preferring to play the more aggressive strategies. Although, speaking of aggressive, one thing that has gotten Webum Ultra some attention is the fact that its Diamond Evolution is literally Maxator Ultra two points cheaper. Not, not only is it literally Maxator Ultra two points cheaper, the Diamond Maxator, it is also a common card where Maxator, which is a 1515 for 10, was an awesome rare. So, uh, I mean, I, I've been hearing a lot of complaints about how the game is having some power creep, and that is, that is definitely happening. I think, well, the thing is, a lot of these sets I think were already made. 
Um, there's definitely some power creep happening. For example, Super Shot was a good card, but then they introduced a card that is literally just a better Super Shot. Um, but I don't know if this really counts, because I've already defined the original Maxator as essentially unplayable because of its high cost. This, the lower cost, makes it a bit more viable. This is something you might be able to get into play as a finisher if you run an aggressive enough Ventus deck. At a cost 8, it's a bit more reasonable. Cost 10, though, maybe not so much. There's also the fact that its core base, uh, 404, is okay, but the fact that it has the built-in reroll on the base, so it has an ability that it can lean on until you get this card out, makes Webmem Ultra basically a better Maxator. Sorry, uh, Shiner Riot fans. And now we have Webum itself. Now, I know it doesn't look like I've closed it all the way, but nope, this is this is how it's in intended to look. It uh, The legs still kind of all bunched up around the base and into this uh, abdomen here, and it looks like it's uh, not entirely closed here. It looks like it's it's still half open even when it's uh, like this. Anyway, we have the, the face. We have a lot of paint on this one. This one has a lot of that... Uh, a lot of that citrus green both going on on the on the front and on the back. Here's the magnet here on the, the thorax, which is, uh, it's similar to how Mantanoid did it, if I remember correctly, although it has a, a much larger thorax here. It's a little bit lacking in detail on the thorax, but, you know, that's kind of true to how spiders look in real life. Spiders don't tend to be very complex in this area. That and, uh, I don't even need to tell you how much of the complexity of this thing is actually on the inside here. It's, uh... It does look a little bit bare, although perhaps the idea they're going for is it's like a spider like peeking out of its hole or something. Still, kind of weird seeing it like this. I guess this was a compromise they had to make in order to actually be able to fit all of those legs in there without like some sort of ugly parts forming feature happening. Anyway, don't really have any base form of Webum to compare it to, so let's get this thing open. Wow, talk about a Bakugan with a high skill cap. I was messing around with this thing for a while, and if uh, the way I roll it is so that it uh, faces towards the camera when it finishes rolling, but based on how this thing behaves, this thing has a lot of potential, especially for a skilled roller, once you really get the hang of rolling this thing. Because um, what this thing does is it, uh, it can actually jump in the air and land on its back, and if it does, this big old abdomen here has the chance to maybe grab another core to bring with it. So if it lands upside down, pick it up by one of its legs to see if maybe you can hook another core when you bring it in. I mean, I have seen it kick the core a couple of times, but it's always when it lands face down. So it could just as easily land on another core. This is another Bakugan with fantastic multi-core grabbing potential. And it, it, it just looks amazing. This is one of the Bakugan that I've been looking forward to seeing for a long time, and it just looks great. We have these, uh, a lot of use of excellent color here. A lot of the citrus green on the legs and on the, the body. A lot, a lot of really sharp design went into this. We all have these, uh, legs here, and each of these legs, they're actually, the, the leg tips are actually, uh, made with the same component. They have sort of these little, uh, these little grooves on one side, these little notches, uh, these little pegs on the other. And this is actually how the legs get held in when you bundle it all up into the abdomen. I'll show you that a bit later. We have the head here, which has the eight eyes and a bit of a, a bit of a, I don't know if that's quite a spidery configuration. It's the one piece of action is that you can uh, open the mouth like that. I don't know if I like how that looks. I kind of like how it's uh, mashed down like this and we can like imagine that these are like the, like the pinchers, the, these are the jaws of the, the spider. I think it looks better with the head closed. Unfortunately, that's an easy choice. You just uh, leave that part alone. That, to me, looks great. This thing is stellar all around design. We have the the back here. It looks great from every angle. It's it's another one of those back you got that looks great no matter how what angle you look at it. I mean, this side has the screw holes on it, but that's not quite as bad. Um, it, uh, it it it's got a lot going for it. That we have this uh, this sort of part here, which. Uh, not only acts as a break for the jaws here, but it's also part of the central rolling tire, which you can see going across the back here. This tire seems to be a bit of an odd shape. It's actually kind of concave here. So if it if it, if it jostles to one side, it can jostle kind of easily. But otherwise, this thing is uh, this thing is a joy to roll and a joy to play with. A quick look at the underside here. We can see the 400B on the butt again. Um, unlike snake butts, however, spider butts are far from confusing. Um, they have they have very large ones. We have uh, the the uh, magnet which is in here. It's a very strong magnet. The magnet housing is in here, and it uh, 
ends up into this core here. And thanks to the design here, it also helps hold the feet in place when you uh, fold it up. And folding it up, it's uh, they, they say it's a level one, but there's still a lot going on with folding it up where you have to uh, take in all the legs at once, basically. Yeah, you get a set of legs like that, then you get the other set of legs like that, then you bring down this topper here to uh, fold all the legs together. You see they all have that sort of, uh, you can see how they interlock, those pegs interlock together to hold it down, and then you just bring up the abdomen, and uh, there's your uh, your little Spider-Man. We're going into the webum verse here, the World Wide Web-Em. Um, but yeah, I love this thing. This thing this thing was well worth the wait. The fact that it has the really high skill cap on the rolling, along with the built-in reroll effect, I imagine this thing is going to see some play. People might even try to play the, the Diamond Webm Ultra just because of how well this thing behaves. If this thing gets the chance to roll unopposed with its reroll effect, it can be very dangerous if it lands on its back and manages to fish up an additional core when you uh, lift it off the mat, which is... Uh, very, very, very easily doable there. Well, almost. <laughs> For the few times that it does work, you know. Maybe not the most reliable thing in the world, but uh, you can manage to nab uh, a second core. You can try, I guess. You can at least mess up the field a bit when you take this thing with you. But yeah, a lot of potential to grab additional cores. A really high skill cap. This is something that... Uh, I know Jet Kuso talks about how much he practices. This is definitely a Bakugan that I feel will be very dangerous if you give it enough practice. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Anyway, that is a look at Webum, one of the Wave 4 Ultras. Next time I'll have the final Wave 4 Bakugan. Taking a look at the waves, it's like all the odd-numbered ones have all the starter sets and all the three packs and stuff, and the even-numbered waves so far have only had the single packs, although that's not a problem. We're going to get the other ones coming out in uh, later waves with the full-size packs. So, until next time, this is Kodak signing off. Bakugan Brawl, it's a big brawl. Bakugan Brawl, it's for it all. Bakugan Brawl, standing tall, we're the awesome ones. Powers in our hand.